Let's cover a few uh, defects in T-cell mediated immunity. And there are a number of them, and these are the, the few that I'm uh, expecting you to, to know and understand, uh, especially the cellular mechanisms um, by which uh, these deficiencies are uh, caused. So the first one we'll talk about is SCID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. And there are a number of things uh, that can cause SCID, and we'll touch on a few. So what uh, this deficiency refers to, it, so it's a severe immunodeficiency. And it's severe because individuals are susceptible to all types of pathogens, viral pathogens, bacterial pathogens, intracellular, extracellular. So it's, very, it's of a severe immunodeficiency. It is combined because it affects both humoral immunity, B cells, and cell-mediated immunity, T cells. So it's a combined immunodeficiency. So individuals who suffer from SCID uh, typically have no T cell function and defective B cell function. Um, what are the causes of SCID? There are many different causes. I'll just cover a few here. Um, some individuals, when they're born, uh, they lack a thymus. So the thymus doesn't develop for some genetic or uh, structural reason. And this is actually referred to as the George syndrome. If an individual is born without a thymus, uh, what's going to be the effect? The effect is going to be no production of mature T cells, no CD4 cells, no CD8 cells. If you lack CD8 cells, you are not going to be able to recognize virally infected cells and, and eliminate them. If you lack CD4 cells, you are going to be unable to uh, stimulate B cells in a thymid-dependent manner. You're going to be unable to activate macrophages and do all the other effector uh, functions of helper T cells. So that is a severe immunodeficiency. Uh, something else that would cause SCID would be a defective RAG enzyme. So if you recall, the RAG enzymes are involved in VDJ recombination or somatic recombination, both in gene rearrangement of the T-cell receptor proteins and the heavy and light chain receptor proteins. So you need the RAG enzymes to perform gene rearrangement in the TCR alpha gene, the TCR beta gene, the heavy chain gene, and the light chain gene. Individuals who uh, have defective RAG genes and make defective RAG enzymes uh, do not perform these gene rearrangements, and therefore they are not making mature uh, B cells or mature T cells for that matter, because their cells do not go undergo gene rearrangements. So they in fact lack all B cells and all T cells. Um, those individuals can sometimes be treated by a bone marrow transplant if they um, can get a match of an individual whose uh, uh, bone marrow cells are normal, that they do make the RAG enzymes. Uh, that is one way to um, treat individuals who have inherited a defective um, RAG genes. Okay, let's cover another immunodeficiency. Uh, this is called MHC class 1 deficiency also known as Bare Lymphocyte Syndrome 1, class 1, these individuals uh, do not uh, perform MHC1 antigen presentation and thus lack the ability to generate mature, naive T cells, specifically CD8 positive T cells. So let's see why that's the case. Um, it goes back to the uh, thymus and um, positive selection of T cells. So if you recall in the thymus, um, after somatic recombination in the alpha and the beta chains, we hopefully have a cell that's undergone productive rearrangements, and these thymocytes are double positive. So they express with both CD8 and CD4 on their surface. During positive selection, thymic epithelial cells will express self-peptides on MHC class 1 molecules. So we're loading self-peptides here, we're presenting self-peptides to these double positive thymocytes, looking for thymocytes that have an alpha and beta gene uh, that has been rearranged to make a T-cell receptor protein that will interact with our MHG isoforms. So if that's the case, if you recall, what occurs here, if the alpha and the beta protein will actually bind strongly to the MHG molecule, that this cell will be selected for positive selection and it will turn into a single positive CD8 positive T cell, right? So that's positive selection of uh, CD8 cells through interaction with one 
of the MHC1 molecules. Now, in some individuals, they inherit uh, a defective gene that, uh, or genes that uh, make the TAP protein non-functional. So why would a defective TAP affect um, selection for CD8-positive T-cells? If you recall, the TAP um, proteins are involved in transporting peptides from the cytoplasm into the lumen of the ER, where those peptides are loaded onto MHC class 1 molecules. If your TAP proteins are defective, most likely due to a genetic defect, then don't make the TAP proteins. And that means that no peptides will travel from the cytoplasm into the lumen of the ER. This is going to significantly affect positive selection. Why? If you don't load peptides on MHC class 1 molecules, they never travel to the surface of the cell. So if MHC1s aren't traveling to the surface of the cell loaded with peptide, then in the thymus, you will not ever select for CD8 positive T cells. So uh, having a defect in positive selection um, due to a defective peptide loading process will mean that you do not make CD8 positive T cells. And if that's the case, we know these cells are really important in combating viral infection. And individuals who lack CD8 uh, do, in fact, have difficulties combating viral infections. So that's MHC class 1 deficiency, also known as Bare Lymphocyte Syndrome class 1. There is also an MHC class 2 deficiency, also known as Bare Lymphocyte um, Syndrome class 2. And in these individuals, do not make any CD4 helper T cells. And it's due to, again, a, a process of defective positive selection. So again, returning back to the thymus, we have these double positive thymocytes. They express both CD8 and CD4. And during positive selection, we recall that self-peptides are loaded onto MHC class 2 molecules, and those peptides are presented to these double positive thymocytes if the alpha and the beta chains have rearranged such that they interact strongly with these HLA alpha chain beta chain, right? The MHC class 2 is made of two chains, alpha and beta. If you can interact strongly with them and check the peptide that's loaded in them, then this uh, double positive thymocyte uh, will mature into a single positive CD4 helper T cell. Uh, some individuals uh, inherit uh, or have genetic defects in genes that uh, make proteins involved in MHC class 2 production and peptide loading. And there are a number of proteins, which we didn't cover in class, that are involved in peptide loading onto MHC class 2. Any number of them can be defective and affect this process. And there are other genes that control um, uh, the expression of the alpha and the beta chain of MHC class 2. Those can be defective as well. Either way, if individuals can't either produce MHC class 2 or load peptides onto MHC class 2, then uh, in the thymus, they will never positively select for CD4 helper T cells. And those individuals would have difficulty in combating infections due to the fact that they would not uh, ever help uh, B cells undergo B cell activation via, via a thymus-dependent manner. They would not uh, pr participate in macrophage activation or stimulate neutrophils. So these individuals suffer from an immunodeficiency, again, lacking uh, CD4 helper T cells. Now, the final one we'll talk about is actually not an immunodeficiency, but an autoimmune disorder. So in an autoimmune disorder, the immune system is attacking self. It thinks self is an uh, uh, infection. So this has got a quite a long name, this autoimmune disorder, A-P-E-C-E-D. Autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidus ectoderm dystrophy. So that's a lot there. Um, we're actually only going to talk about the first part of this uh, disorder. And again, it comes back to selection in the thymus, this time of defect in negative selection. So if you recall, in the thymus, uh, once cells have become single positive, so they've either expressed CD4 or CD8 on their surface, these cells will then undergo negative selection. So cells in the thymus, including the epithelial cells or 
dendritic cells or macrophages will um, be uh, presenting self-peptides. Now, one of the processes in presenting self-peptides is to take sort of a random sampling of proteins that are expressed all over the body and express them in the thymus. And this is due to the expression of a transcription factor called AIRE, autoimmune regulatory, um, autoimmune regulator protein. So this is a transcription factor, if you recall, and what it does in the thymus is it turns on genes that produce proteins that are tissue specific and that are present all over the body. So for example, you're producing uh, pancreatic proteins and um, uh, thyroid proteins, and especially a lot of proteins from endocrine glands. Endocrine glands make and secrete lots of proteins. So um, we want to train T cells to ignore those proteins, ignore those peptides. Um, because we make a lot of them and we present them as self, but we want the immune system to learn not to attack them. So in uh, negative selection, the AIRE transcription factor turns on a lot of these uh, proteins, especially made from the endocrine gland, glands all over the body, uh, turns them on in the thymus and displays them to these single positive thymus sites. And if your T cell receptor uh, has undergone uh, gene rearrangement such that your alpha and beta chain proteins recognize and bind strongly this self-peptide, what is supposed to occur at this step in negative selection? Recognizing self would trigger apoptosis. The cell would die because we don't want to let it out into the world um, because it recognizes us as self and it might attack self. So individuals who suffer from this immune autoimmune disorder lack uh, the um, ability to produce this AIRE transcription factor. Again, this could be due to a genetic defect in the genes that produce this protein. So if you lacked this protein, then in your thymus, you would not turn on any of these tissue-specific proteins in order to train T cells to ignore them. So if that's the case, negative selection uh, is defective in the thymus. And instead of dying by apoptosis, these cells don't die. They're let out into the body where they, in fact, will bind. Some of the, the T cells will bind strongly to uh, self-peptides presented on MHG molecules and will um, attack especially endocrine uh, glands. Um, so these uh, in individuals who suffer from this autoimmune disorder, T cells recognize and attack self, especially endocrine glands. So that's just a small list of defects in T-cell mediated immunity that I would like you to know.